Namaskaram. Here we are just uh, back from the prana pratishta of uh, Nandi and Mahashula at the Sanidhi in Bangalore. And of course, the whole country is agog about Sri Rama temple in Ayodhya. Rightly so, because people have been waiting for over five hundred years. And here it is, so there is a tremendous excitement in the country. What is this all about? The process of establishing or consecrating a deity is about stabilizing an energetic or pranic form that exudes prescribed qualities. The qualities that we ascribe to the deity are the same qualities that we hold high and aspire for. In this civilization that we refer to as Hindustan, we do not wait for divinity to descend, but nurture and cultivate that possibility within us. In this effort, creating a stable base within is vital, and that is called anusthanam in Sanskritam, and anusthana in southern India, and Hindi-speaking people call it anusthan. This is an effort to build a foundation of the divine possibility within ourselves or turning this body into a living temple with purificatory processes and life-enhancing methods, making the body fit enough to house the divine. For all consecrations that we do here, there is always an appropriate yoga sadhana for the participants these sadhanas are a way of creating a stable base within to manifest the deity or the energy form that is manifested through prana pratishta. This process of anushtanam is done for various periods. There are sadhakas who do it for an entire solar cycle, which is just short of twelve years. There are those who do for thirty-six months, there are those who do for ninety days, sixty-four days, thirty-three days, twenty-eight, twenty-one, twelve, eleven, nine, seven, five, three days, depending upon the type of prana pratishta. These sadhanas are designed to enable the participant to imbibe and form the nature of the deity beyond imprints of memory and associated emotion, to make impression upon the pranamaya kosha and vijnanamaya kosha of who we are. That means, beyond the physical body and mental structures, we want to take this imprint of both this form and its qualities at a deeper level. In other words, to store or show the divine possibility into your deeper space of oneself, that the general rigor of life cannot deny or contaminate that possibility. In one's search for liberation or moksha, this is an important step. The process of anusthana is not only relevant at the time of consecration, but can be done at any time as convenient for individual people. It was common practice for individuals endowing to take up significant activity in their life went into periods of anusthana. It is well documented of kings performing anusthana before venturing into war or important campaigns, because success does not come due to one's desire, but by ensuring that one's own pravritti or set patterns of function do not become an impediment. To take on great challenges of the world, First thing to ensure is that you are not the problem. Anusthana is a powerful way that involves various methods as per the evolution of the individual. Or for every type of human being, a specific anusthana can be worked out. 
It can be prescribed in terms of physical processes, breath-related, ritualistic, energetic, or very consciousness-oriented. Every human being needs to do or find a way of doing anustana if wanting to live a life of impact and fulfillment. It is very heartening for me to see that the head of state of this great crucible of civilization doing anusthana upon Rama, who in many ways is held as the epitome of a just, stable and a prosperous rule. Not just one leader, but all leaders and citizens of Bharat should do anusthana to create Rama Rajya, or a nation that is based on principles and rules, a law-abiding nation, which we refer to as dharma. Dharma as a word has been confiscated by the common narrative of being a religion. Dharma means a law. There were various types of dharmas, Raja dharma for the Raja, Grihastha dharma for people who live in families, Guru dharma for those who take up that position, uh, various kinds of dharmas for different kinds of activity. That means rules and principles and it ethics as to how one should function in a given position. But the most important dharma is Swadharma, the dharma concerned with oneself. That is a spiritual process and that has taken the dominance and today other dharmas are not being talked about. So what does Rama Rajya mean? Is it about <laughs> going back to bow and arrow times? No. It is about the values, the fundamental ethic that one should hold. When other people come under your influence, leaders who keep their personal well-being aside for people's welfare, this is Rama. Willing to sacrifice personal goals for the larger good, that is Rama. To address all negativity with equanimity and grace, that is Rama. No matter at what cost to establish the rule of law or dharma, that is Rama. A constant striving to improve oneself, to be able to serve better every moment of your life, that is Rama. And if leaders aspire to become this, if they do anustana on these qualities, there shall be Rama Rajya. When I say leaders, don't just think about political and military leaders or that sort. If you have just one more life upon which you can influence, if your influence is on one life or ten lives or a million lives or a billion lives, if you have the ability to influence and be a power upon another life, you must follow these five principles and you must create Rama Rajya wherever you are. That's what it means. It is not just leader means somebody who is up there, either elected or a king or a military leader or a business leader. Yes, it's relevant to all of them, but it's important that we understand leadership means we have the opportunity to make a difference in another life, whether it's one or one billion, that's not the point. Let's create Rama Rajya, let's make it happen.